Since the beginning of time, all the matter in the universe has been governed by precisely balanced laws and constants. During an interview with Robin Collins, a philosopher with degrees in mathematics and physics, Lee Strobel learned how these laws offer compelling evidence for a creator and conspire to make the universe habitable for life. The laws of physics are balanced on a razor's edge for life to occur. For example, if you didn't have something like gravity that pulled matter together, you would never get planets, you wouldn't get stars, you wouldn't get any complex organisms. If you didn't have the strong nuclear force, there would be nothing to hold protons and neutrons together in the nucleus. And so you wouldn't have any atoms, so no chemistry. If you didn't have the electromagnetic force, you would have no bonding between chemicals. You would have no light, and the list goes on. So you need all these sorts of fundamental principles have to be in place in order for life to occur. Wipe out one of those principles, wipe out one of those laws, no life. Strobel learned that life also hinges on the precise strengths and relative values of many different physical constants. One example of this fine tuning is the force of gravity. Imagine a ruler divided up into one inch increments and then stretched across the entire universe, a distance of some 14 billion light years. For the purposes of illustration, the ruler represents the possible range for gravity. In other words, the setting for the strength of gravity could have been anywhere along the ruler, but it just happens to be situated in exactly the right place so that life is possible. Now, if you were to change the force of gravity by moving the setting just one inch compared to the entire width of the universe, the effect on life would be catastrophic. No large-scale life forms could exist. Anything that was more than the size of a pea would be completely crushed. So you might be able to get life of a very, very primitive sort, such as bacteria, but you could never get conscious observers. The strength of gravity is just one of at least 30 separate parameters that must be finely tuned to produce a life-sustaining universe. Another example is the cosmological constant. The cosmological constant describes the expansion speed of space in the universe. If space expands too quickly, then the universe will spread out so quickly that material objects can't form. So you can't get stars and galaxies and planets and the types of things that we, of course, take for granted in our universe. Physicists have determined that the cosmological constant is fine-tuned to one part in a hundred million billion 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 billion. Such precision has been compared to traveling hundreds of miles into space, then throwing a dart at the Earth and hitting a bullseye measuring one trillionth of a trillionth of an inch in diameter, an area less than the width of a single atom. Just consider those two parameters, gravity and the cosmological constant. Their level of fine tuning is to a precision of one part in a hundred million trillion, 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 trillion. I mean, that's like one atom in the entire known universe. This fine tuning is also evident at the atomic level. The strong nuclear force binds atoms together. If the strength of this force were to decrease by one part in 10,000 billion, 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 the only element left in the universe would be hydrogen. Again, chemical life would not be possible. The fine tuning of the laws and forces of physics is so precise that few theorists are comfortable invoking mere chance as an explanation. Unless our universe is not the only roll of the dice, if the universe looks like it's fine-tuned for complex life, maybe there's a fine-tuner. Maybe it was fine-tuned for life. And this has certain unsavory theological implications. And so it's not surprising that those committed to a, a fundamentally materialistic view of reality uh, would try to find an escape hatch. And the most popular escape hatch for this theological implication of fine-tuning is this idea of multiple universes. As its name suggests, the theory of multiple universes proposes that our universe is not alone. 
Instead, it is part of a vast ensemble of universes, each with a different set of laws and constants. If there's only one universe, then the conclusion that the universe looks fine-tuned because it is fine-tuned is inescapable. But if our universe is just one of a vast set, then you seem to have more resources to play with. Chance gets a new lease on life. I sometimes try to imagine what physicists have in mind that postulate this idea of multiple universes. I mean, what would the generator look like that creates them? Maybe it's like a giant monolith that has dozens of different dials, each of which has to be set to the right physical constant. If we think of these parameters as dials, each of the dials is different. So if you produce enough universes with enough different dial settings, eventually, just by chance, you get one just right. So you might have to produce a trillion, 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 trillion universes. But eventually, if you have a generator that's just spitting out just an enormous number of them, then it gets the right dial setting. And then, by just chance, you get conditions right for life. So it's a huge cosmic lottery. That's the idea. It's an interesting idea. I mean, there's really only one problem with it. There's no independent evidence that it's true. Besides, it really just pushes the question back a step, because we could still ask, who built the generator? The suggestion of multiple universes strikes me as a desperate attempt to explain away the obvious, which is that the universe is finely tuned by an intelligence to sustain complex life. An intelligence that must be beyond the constraints of time and space. <laughs>